Okay, so this is where we ended our tutorial. And I will do tutorial for glare analysis. Glare analysis is a view-based analysis. So then we need to create a view first. This is where all the models and sens sensor points and views are being collected. And this is the model we created. This is the, the sensor points we made. And now we need view for like this input. Then let's say there is a person who is standing at 2.2.0. And let's see where it is. Okay, there is a person there. And maybe the Like the person's eye is about 1.2 meters above and is vertical. Okay, then this is the location. This is where the eye is. Um, we wanna make a view from here. Then, Let's make a view first. If you type view, there is honeybee view. You can click it. And you wanna make a name like, like study room. Put the name here. And then the position. Position is where the person's eye is. So that's where the view will be made. And it's saying direction. So we assume like this point is where the person's eye is, but for view analysis, the orientation makes a big difference. Then we need the direction. So let's see what is saying, a vector for the direction that the view is facing where the length of the vector indicates the focal distance as needed by the pixel depth of uh, field. Okay, I will make a vector that represents the head direction. And let's say, let's make a line. Make a line. And the I location is the starting point. And I will, I will, I will move the points again. Move the points towards the Y direction. Maybe just my one. Actually, the length doesn't really matter since this is more about the direction. And this is like where the person is facing. And if you put this one to the line, this is where the person is facing. Since it's confusing, I will turn it up. So this is where the person's eye is. And the line is like where the person is facing. And the direction, we can just assume that this person is just like facing north or we can also like bake the line and then make rotation by ourselves. Or we can use the rotation, rotate component. and make the line rotate at the point of the person's eye. And the angle, this is, by the way, is in radian. But we usually think about the grid in like 360 degrees. So this is the slider. And then if I put the 
put this one to the angle, like there is something wrong that I need to go to the angle in the rotation and make it to degrees so that it corresponds our like perception of degree. So by rotating, we can change the head orientation of the person. So this is it, like maybe we can assume the person is facing to south just for now. And if we put this vector and I will make it invisible. And if we make this vector to here, then now it has the view. And we can put this view into this component. So this model has all the components, the physical like walls and windows and also the grid of sensors and then the person's view. This is what you need to prepare to run the view-based analysis. Uh, I think in class, I forgot to show how I can visualize the model. So if you go to visualize under Honeybee, then you can find visualize wireframe over here. And then if you plug the model over here, you can see what the windows are. And let's go to the wire that I used. I will turn it off for now. And so you can change the room size by sliding this one. And this one, I think some of you made some mistake about the aperture by ratio. So this window parameter should go to the ratio. And changing the ratio will change the shape of the windows, like whether it's small or large. And window height can also change the window shape in the given window to wall ratio. So this is how you can change the window shapes. And actually this is like what you can use for a uh, simulation with the multiple rooms. This is not really necessary since we have only one room, but I just made it to like let you know that we need to use for multiple rooms. So this is the way how I visualize it. And these are the inputs for the model. So the view type, it should be had hemispherical fisheye because we are running the glare analysis and that's, that's what the glare analysis is based on. So I will put one for the input value and let's see. So first, if you have some problem with version like me, then you can do the reversion. So I will have two components. First one is Ladybug Virginer. So I can use toggle to make it work. And then for the version, I want to update my version to 1.5 because that's what the computer lab has. So if you also have some issue with version that you can do this and run it. It takes a few seconds. It 
and you may need to restart your Rhino. And also have another cover ready. This component is Ladybug Sync Grasshopper file. So if there is any component that is not the same version with this one, it will change the version automatically. And after that, if there is any components that have to be replaced, it ha has some like red mark. So you can check that. And I think now my file doesn't have any other issue with version. Okay, then now I will use the Honeybee model to run glare analysis. You can go to Honeybee Radiance and go to recipe. I will use Honeybee point in time view base so that it will run view based analysis and we can have the PG value that we need to like get. So from this component, I will bring model and uh, it needs sky. We can use CIE sky. It's very quick so that I used it in class. But we can also use climate based sky. If we want to create a sky based on the weather data. So if you look at this component, only WEA is required. If you notice this on the bar on the left side. And let's find WEA. And there is honeybee WAA from EPW file. So that connect this one to here. And let's see, this one needs EPW file. So I will bring the weather data from this one. And bring it to here. So it generated climate based sky and we need to put the month and hour like which sky we are looking at because it's point in time analysis we have spring month 12 p.m hour and now is the sky for march 12 p.m and just checking whether it looks okay and put the sky data into this one. And let's see, there are several more settings that we need to make metric. So zero illuminance, one irradiance, two luminance, three radiance. And we are doing the luminance analysis for DGP. So I uh, will put two for metrics. And for resolution, it has 800 by default, but I will put 600 by 600 just to make the simulation faster. And I think we need a radiance parameter. So radiance parameter. And it has a required input, which is recipe type. If you hover over the recipe type, zero point in time grid the light vector, one point in time view, and 
still looks like what we need and put the radiance parameter. And let's run toggle. And we can also use like ladybug false start toggle, which will be turned off whenever you close the grasshopper. So when you reopen the file, it wouldn't run the simulation. So let's try to run this one. And when you see this popped up black window, that is a good sign that the simulation is going well. Or like at least they started. And let's see what the data looks like. So let's see. This is the address of the HDR file. And we want to check what the image looks like first. Go to Ladybug, Extra, and Image Viewer. Click here, make it, and then we can bring it to Image Path, and then see how the person is going to see this room from that angle. And OK, this is the image based one. And we need DGP value. DGP, no, I put clear and clear positive process. This is HDR file, so put this one here. And now it has the value. And from the output, let's see what the value is. So it's 0 0.3, and that's below the criteria 0 0.35. So it seems to be acceptable. And this is how you you run the, the glare analysis based on the like climate based the sky. So I will make this as a group. And I will also make this as another group. And so this is it and I also want to talk about how you can manage the data. So if you run simulation for different times, always it, it will override the file if they have the same name. So look at here, it has study room, which is the like view name. And okay. Even though I changed the time of day and month, it will have the same file name, then it will be overwritten and you're not gonna get like the file you ran earlier. So there is, is a way you can make multiple files for multiple times without like making them overwritten and deleted. So let's see, this is the name of view, which is over here, that if we play with the view name, then it will generate different files. So I, what I suggest is putting the data of month and the time probably also the angle where the person is looking at. If you bring all the data into the view name, then the file name will be that one. So I will try to concatenate. If you can find any other good ways to manage the like files and data, you can definitely do that. And I always recommend to find your own way. 
but this is how I do. Bring it to bring the view name, and I use underbar to separate data. And so start your room. Bring the spring. Separate. 12 p.m. Separate. And yeah, let's do the angle. And yeah, I think that's it. So if you look at the output is the room name, March 12 p.m. 142 degree. And if you get confused, then you can also change the title like view name. And okay, this might be month. And this might be hour. This is angle. So if you put this one into the view name, of course, it reruns the analysis. And look at here, the address of the file shows it has the view name so that they will have different file names and not gonna override the other file. Okay. And Bob, like to make reports, you need GIF file instead of HBR file. Then you can also convert the HR to GIF component. And then bring this HDR file into GIF and since and then see where this is. And if you copy data only and go to the address. Folder, and then you will find like what the region chart. And you can use these images for your report. So, this is how you can change file names. And also, there is another thing how to record the DPG, no, DGP values. Every time you run simulation, it will like it will be updated. Then, like, should you copy and paste to somewhere, or is there any easier way? And I will share how I do this, but you can also find your own way. So I will do another concatenate. Bring the file name and bring it over here in another data separation and i rec i mean like you can use anything here but you can use like special character that can be like going to files name maybe you wouldn't put something that cannot be files name so this is it. And I will put this value at the end. And if you see the result, it has a value. So view name, month, date, the head angle, and DGP value. Of course, you need to remember it or you can also do like DGP here, and then you will have DGP over here so that it's easier to recognize what the value is for. So that's something you can play with. And how do we make a record for this? Should we copy and paste every time you run the simulation? No, we wanna make it easier. So then you can use this component 
data recorder. So you can use this one and then see like what it looks like. So this one is just clearing the data. And so let's go, sorry, let's go here. And this is my control panel. And I ran spring, noon, but what about summer, noon? It's running. Yep. Then you see the DG, DGP value is a little bit different. And if you go to this box, you see it has recorded for March 12, like June 12. So if you change the angle, it will have the corresponding data. And later on, you just need to copy this one once instead of doing it multiple times. So that's my like way of controlling the data, but always you can find your own way to do it. But this is my recommendation, but never copy it. You need to make your own. Okay, so this is how you manage the view name and and how to manage the data. And like once you make your own way to manage data, it gets much easier at the end, even though it takes a while to set up. So if you go to the folder again, you should have, like, let's see, copy data and go to the address, delete the file name. And he has the new values. So point in time, results. And that's how you can get the files. And let's just try again for winter. Okay, now it's done. It has a little bit higher DGP value. And now we have another line of data and another GIF file. If you go to further, you should have like the GIF file. So I think why I don't get, I feel like for this components, they are like deleting the earlier files, but you can find your way to manage the data. But at least you can collect the DGP file, no, DGP values. Yeah, that's it for these. I will make this one false for now. And another thing I wanna do tutorial is building a model from Rhino and then bring that geometry into the simulation model. So Ariel, Ariel try to, let's see, Ariel try to copy this grid components for new model. And I will also copy the view components. 
Uh, and then give one other view, study room, maybe a living room. The name for the new model. Um, this is view, this is grid. And this one is like where the inputs of the model comes and then like goes to the simulation components. So if you change the input of this component, then that's easy to change like the model that you're running simulation. So let me first disconnect this one so that we don't have the earlier one anymore. And I will make it invisible. And let's try to build maybe hurry turn up this on pad. And let's build the box. Box. Just roughly. And explode to make these into surface not a solid. So this is a room and I can put a bureau and collect these geometries and set multiple bureaus. Okay. And I will also draw a window. All right, just to make a window. All right. Well, if this window goes like to the edge of the walls, it won't be like red as a window. So I will just scale it down to like your point. So this is window. And set one bureau. So if you look at the model, this is the room, this is the window. And now I will make them into honeybee surface, honeybee face. This is Topic surface and this is window. So I will make it as aperture. Bring it here. And you can also change the name like room geometry. And window. Okay, then we can, so this is the main surface and this is subsurface. So we can add surface, combine the surfaces by doing this with the add surface, a soft base component, add the main surface and do the aperture one to sub basis. And so these are like still honeybee like objects, but I want to make it as a room and bring it into the room. And if you like look at there, it needs to go to model. So there can be multiple rooms, but we will bring all the rooms into one model, which is a honeybee model. And put the room over here. 
So this one, and then this is the model you can plug in to here. And with this room data, the new room data, you can generate new grid. And let's see, actually for glare analysis, you don't need grids, but for other, other like illuminance analysis, you need this. And with the new view, we can put it here. And uh, let's change the grid just for now. So this is the core part of the simulation. One model from the box only to surfaces and things. And these are the geometry generated from Rhino and then bring it into model. So I will make these as a group and separate these a little bit. And then let's see where this point is. So this is where this point is. Okay, so this room is really large. Then I wanna change the grid size into two meters or like one meter, it depends. Oh, uh, anyhow, this is like the person's hat. And let's pretend this person is standing. So like one point, like whatever the height. So this is the hat. This is like where the person is. And this is view angle. Where the person is looking at. And let's make is invisible. And if after you internalize the data, you can delete the geometry. So it's there. And especially when you send me the files, you really have to internalize data. Otherwise, I don't know like what your room this look like. So this is it. And we can try another clear analysis. And maybe, yeah, we change the view name and let's see what happens. Yeah, this is the view from the new room. I think I made the room really large. This is one. <laughs> so there is 100% of probability to have glare. So that's not good, but still that's what it is. And if I go down to the end, so it gives like one for the DGP value, then you can add shadings to deal with it. You can analyze the sum position and such things. You can also like change the file name as you want and then go to the folder and check what the file looks like the same as I did with the earlier model. So this is, kind of control path, I can change the month, hour, and like orientation of room. What I usually do is also bringing all these simulation like toggles into this control pad. That's really up to you, but you can, this is in this group, but you can remove from group and bring this one into this group and change the name to the DGP analysis. 
And uh, whenever you want to run this analysis, you just like click this one. And you can also bring other toggles like this one. This was point in time analysis. And remove from group. Bring it into the control panel. Add it to the control panel group and change the name. Like point to in time. Luminance. Something like that. So that you can just like click true, false, and then see the result. And you forget about like the complicated components series. So this is like some of my way of running simulation, but always you can find your own way. And you can also do like month and hour. So you can play like with like namings and stuff as much as possible so that later on when the model gets complicated, then it's easier to recognize. Yeah, so these were where we had the in-class tutorial by making box and made a model, grid, and view. This is based on the model from Rhino. So room geometry, window geometry, add surface, bring it into room, put it into model, and then generate its own grid and also its own view. And then bring that into the core where the, the model and simulation tools are meeting. And this is like visualizing what model you are testing so that you can see the room and windows. And I think this line is where the sun position is. I think I created like this line by making a line with the sun point and then the center point. So you can add as many as possible for the analysis and such things. And I think this is it for now. And you can send me email if you have any questions.